But there were some other sights and sounds at CES outside of NVIDIA, if you can believe that. Uh, one such sight and sound that we did see is AMD. We did go to the AMD booth. We did see some interesting stuff at AMD. By now, we will have already published our video covering AMD's research project, aka FSR4. Uh, at least, you know, quite possibly FSR4 there. Mm -hmm. But they actually had another interesting research project demo to show us. Yeah. So can you kind of explain what was going on there with some kind of interesting ray tracing, denoising? Yeah. It, you know, kind it, one, of weird thing. Once again, now, this is a lot of disclaimers here. This was a contextless demo. Um, it wasn't really so readily described to me what I was looking at. It was just there and it was running and... Uh, it looked to be, we're just going to call it the de denoising demo, but it looked to be running on presumably an RDNA 4 card. Yeah. And it looked like, um, I would consider it like a full RT implementation almost, where it looked like uh, the direct lighting shadows as well as indirect lighting were handled via ray tracing. Uh, if you turned off denoising, which was possible in this demo, you could see that some stuff was actually mo more coherent right. without it. So maybe, you know, some things weren't fully. Maybe not fully. Not yeah. full PT or whatever, but like more like a full RT implementation. Yeah. And uh, it looked to me when you would look around the demo and turn off the denoising and then turn it back on, there was a couple of things that told me I was looking at something very specific here. Mm -hmm. When you would turn it off, you would see that not only would it get noisier like you're used to when you turn off a denoiser, but it also looked significantly lower res. And if you looked at a static scene, like the shadows on the ground around these like little, what were the cables on the ground, right? Uh, yeah. Like if you looked at them, even while sitting still, the, the shadow would be like slightly wobbly. And that's something like you would see in like a, yeah, like a machine learned denoising, like a AI denoiser, as someone might say. So this looked to me like a demo that was combining upscaling and denoising at the same time, much like ray reconstruction does. And given the artifacts that I saw on direct shadows, I almost want to say it is like machine learned, but I cannot know that. I unfortunately cannot <laughs> know that. And this is me. I think there was a, a post by a GPU open engineer a while back, uh, or maybe most recently about them having worked on this kind of thing. I'm extrapolating on information I do not have. So this is interesting for two reasons. One, um, it's good to see presumably AMD moving in the direction of you applying machine learning to things that are very hard to solve in real time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also good to see more complex um, ray tracing running on RDNA, RDNA 4, right? Like any of the full RT stuff has run extremely poorly on RDNA before. So this, this was like, you know, I can't comment really on the performance. It's like 30-ish. I don't know, maybe yeah. a little bit above. I don't know. Um, but, you know, so it looked it looked good and it was interesting to see. Uh, it wasn't like completely perfect. It was pretty unstable in some ways. Yeah. But, you know, like, it, you know. It kind of looked unstable in like that kind of classic like Lumen style sometimes. I yeah. Guess. It's, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm reminded of like when... Uh, when I looked at Super Mario a bit, 64 with path tracing, <laughs> where like uh, Dario was applying like optics ra rather na naively to the image, and optics is a, an AI denoiser, I'm pretty sure, right? So like, um, it reminded me of that. And uh, it's not a bad or a good thing, but it's just, show it, this is a research project apparently. So in the future, there could be like a ray reconstruction type of technology from AMD. Yeah, but yeah. But I don't know. I mean, for sure it was, it was, looked pretty low resolution internally in addition to being extremely noisy with that ray tracing. Yeah. So it did kind of look like maybe something that might be venturing in that direction. Although the performance wasn't, I mean, it wasn't bad for what this is, but it also wasn't like outstanding. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. It, it was, just, yeah. It wasn't yeah. like looking at, you know, Cyberpunk, which runs really fast in comparison, right? No, yeah. or, or something like Black State. That was, yeah, Black State, which was yeah, like super yeah, fast, right? Insanity. But yeah, I mean, I would say that this is like the kind of thing that, I mean, I'd love to see some direct feed capture of this possibly. I'd love to see a greater explanation of it. But like, again, the alleged FSR4, the great mysterious FSR4, it was just kind of lodged in AMD's booth with no one really to explain what it was. And uh, even, even the hardware that it was running on, which is 
kind of in a state of limbo, a purgatory between announcement and non-announcement as we record this. <laughs> as we were, yeah, who knows what's going to be happening when we publish this. Yeah, yeah right? it's, a, it's a very good question there. But we also did see one other thing at AMD's booth, which I think was of some interest to me in particular, and of course to Alex, which was some new PC handhelds. Now, unfortunately, this was the only... <laughs> Only venue where we saw PC handhelds, which was uh, something something that was definitely on our list for this uh, for this CES, but unfortunately they were they were in short supply apparently. But there was the Legion Go S, and I think also the updated Legion Go device, both running with AMD Z2 processors. That sounds right. Yeah, one of them was running with the next generation Z2 processor, but one was running with the old Rembrandt processor with. Um, Zen 3, I believe, and RDNA 2. Sounds right. Is. Yeah, yeah. So what do you make of these? We've got lots of footage of Alex <laughs> fondling and toying with these things. Yeah, I mean... Experimenting with them. What do you make of them? Uh, I mean, I thought the ergonomics were okay. The The cheaper model did feel cheaper in the hands. That was I felt that was kind of obvious. Uh, ergonomics were okay, though. This was running Windows. This is not the Steam OS stuff that was also announced. We were not... Par- privy to that at the Lenovo booth, which we tried to go to, and it was just it was just empty, and we don't, I don't know, we probably went had a bunch of, like, private meeting rooms, I yeah, think, yeah. If we had more time, maybe we would have scheduled Yeah, I think something. it required, like, a, a, an appointment. Yeah. We didn't, we didn't do that. Um, but uh, the funny thing is they were showing Spider-Man Miles Morales on it. I'm sorry, it was running really poorly, actually, <laughs> on both of them. Uh, yeah. It wasn't a, com- I don't know if it was a configuration issue. They were both set to DRS-30. Right. And one was also running frame gen, frame gen yeah, or AF. Right. Yeah, it was running frame gen, FSR three frame gen, yeah. and you know, you know, frame rate would would typically have been fine, but the big issue was that they were really stuttery. Yeah, yeah, they were really stuttery, and you know, Miles Spider Man is a CPU intensive game. Maybe it was the settings. Maybe this was Windows. Maybe this was driver, but they were stuttery and not very nice looking uh, in that aspect. Yeah, yeah, they were stuttering rather strangely. And then one of the units just kind of up and stopped working on you at some point. The controls just stopped responding. Yeah, controls stopped over. responding. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a little bit awkward. Also, remember when we turned it and then it went portrait mode on us? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the gyroscope really, really kicked us there. Really, really irritating. But yeah, I would certainly echo Alex's comments when it comes to ergonomics. I think that both devices are a little bit thicker than something like a Steam Deck, and the grips are probably of a comparable overall size such that that kind of delta between the grip and the body of the device is a little bit less, so you don't get quite as much of that nice grip as you would in a Steam Deck, if that makes sense. I know what you mean. Yeah, and the grips themselves are kind of sloped a little bit more gently. It's a little bit of a different shape, but I actually appreciated the feel of both devices. I thought they both felt reasonably ergonomic. The full-size Go felt pretty good, the smaller size Go mostly felt pretty good, but it also had, you know, a little bit of a D-pad that wasn't 100% to my liking. <laughs> did feel a little bit cheap. They also had this weird little trackpad knob on the right-hand side. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah that, that did feel a little bit weird to me. It definitely felt like the kind of thing that is designed as a bit of a concession to Windows navigation. Uh, because like we've seen with devices like the ROG Ally, I can personally attest to this, they really don't work so hot <laughs> with Windows navigation. Um, it's it's a big pain, but perhaps that track point does not really serve much of a purpose in a typical actual gameplay. Um, I also know that the uh, Legion Go S is offered in a SteamOS variant mm-hmm. as well, which I'm certainly looking forward to seeing at some point. Unfortunately, we're not able to see <laughs> we're not able to see the SteamOS variant of the Legion Go S. But Valve actually had some news out of CS that I thought was kind of interesting, which is that basically they're going to launch that Legion Go S Steam Edition or SteamOS Edition in May. But for other handhelds, it sounds like in or around March 2025, they're going to start shipping versions of SteamOS for other Windows gaming handhelds, presumably including the ROG Ally, possibly including the earlier Legion Go devices. Right. Because that is something that they that they identified as a priority back in October, um, and I, I'm certainly all for it. Obviously, I love Bazite, and I think that the uh, biggest hurdle 
to the success of these Windows gaming handhelds is actually unfortunate that Windows operating system. Yep. I think it's not very appropriate for handhelds, doesn't provide the kinds of features that you'd like in, in kind of gaming handhelds, doesn't provide the kind of smoothness of interface, doesn't provide the kind of relatively good suspend and resume functionality, you know, lots of different things that Valve has kind of worked through shader comp with fossilized and all this stuff and getting convenient driver updates. And I mean, there, there, there's a whole gigantic list there. So I think that's certainly very encouraging, but it also does make this Legion Go S device maybe a little bit less special because it does seem like Valve is going to basically try to get their operating system out to many, many, many kinds of Windows devices here.